chokes the life out of her. He had no, no motive. I mean, just other than to sexually assault her and kill her and leave no witnesses behind. The sexual killer is not somebody who's doing anything except looking for control, looking for power, looking for domination. And he loved that. That was part of what gave him a thrill. Hernandez now had to get rid of the evidence. So he drove to a place he knew, the Prince of Peace Church, near where he lived. In the field out back, he saw a 55-gallon drum, the perfect size to conceal the remains. Stuffed Susan's body inside, head down, feet up, left hand for the next day. Ten years later, Hernandez goes to trial and sticks to his story that he never meant to kill her. That the strangulation was just an accident. The prosecution counters with a harrowing demonstration of the moment of death. We went through the amount of time it takes for a person to be strangled. It takes at least a minute to a minute and a half before they go unconscious, and then another two minutes of holding their neck and compressing the airways. All we did then was stop in court, ask if we could take a break while we timed out three minutes for the jury to hear. Okay. We had to sit there waiting for that time to pass to just relay how intentional it is to put that kind of harm on somebody. And that was the hardest part. That is something that uh, will never leave me. Just because, you know, you're in that moment um, that, you know, you're putting yourself there. Uh, and and it, that, that's that's the one thing that, above anything else, that, will never ever, that I'll never forget. By closing arguments, there's no question. The prosecution has proven their case against Rodrigo Hernandez. Are you eating him? A reasonable doubt. The jury took 15 minutes to decide he deserved death. No. I don't think anyone in the county, maybe in the state, has gotten the death sentence as quickly. For Detective Sadler, this vicious killer We're not is eating him. close to getting away with murder. This is the first time that I've had anything here in San Antonio to where somebody came from out of state, committed a murder, and left, who didn't leave a trail, who didn't have you a to poke him for you? where he didn't turn off on anybody's radar. He had been still here in Texas, never gone back to Michigan. There you go. Got arrested and probably still walking this day. Throughout it all, Hernandez showed not one ounce of remorse and never once spoke Susan's name or the name of her son. I'm of the belief that there is evil in this world, unfortunately, and it happens to people that don't necessarily ask for it to happen to them. Unfortunately, that has happened to me and my family and my mom, and I don't necessarily feel like I have to know why anymore. But knowing Susan's killer got the ultimate punishment hasn't brought Chuck what he most wants, her grandmother, or his young children. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about her. What hurts me the most is thinking about my kids. I don't kids. understand what you're doing. That they would have had a great relationship with her. She would have adored them. And, uh, and they, would have, they would have adored her, and, and, and it would have just been really great to have been able to be around my kids with my mom. One thought comforts Chuck for all of his grief. I know she watches all of us, my family and me. I hope I've lived uh, my life in a way that she would be uh, she'd be happy, she'd be pleased.